Our next topic is modes of propagation. Electromagnetic wave propagation is described by Maxwell's equations which state that a changing magnetic field produces an electric field and changing electric field produces a magnetic field. Thus, electromagnetic waves are able to self-propagate. The most RF propagation modeling, it is sufficient to visualize the electromagnetic wave by a ray in the direction of propagation. Our next topic is free space propagation. Here in the radio waves travel in free space or away from other objects which influence the way in which they travel. It is only the distance from a source which affect the way in which the signal strength reduces. This type of radio propagation is encountered with the radio communication system including satellites where the signal travel up to the satellite from the ground and back down again. Typically, there is little influence from the elements such as the atmosphere, etc. Our next topic is ground wave propagation. When signal travels via the ground wave, they are modified by the ground or terrain over which they travel. They also tend to follow the Earth's curvature. Signals heard on the medium wave band during the day use this form of RF propagation. Next is ionospheric propagation. Here the radio signals are modified and influenced by a region high in the Earth's atmosphere known as the ionosphere. This form of radio propagation is used by radio communication system that transmits on the HF or short wave bands. Using this form of propagation, stations may be heard from the other side of the globe dependent upon many factors including the radio frequencies used, the time of day and a variety of other factors. Next is tropospheric propagation. Here the signal are influenced by the variation of refractive index in the troposphere just above the Earth's surface. Tropospheric radio propagation is often the means by which signals at VHF and above are heard over extended distances. Next is line of sight propagation. In free space, electromagnetic waves are modeled as propagating outward from the source in all directions resulting in a spherical wave front. Such a source is called isotropic radiator and in the strictest sense does not exist. As the distance from the source increases, the spherical wave front coverages to a planar wave front over any finite area of interest, which is how the propagation is modeled. The direction of propagation is any given point on the wave front is given by the vector across products of the electric field E and the magnetic field H at the point. The polarization of wave is defined as the orientation of the plane that contains the E field. Now next comes types of free space propagation. In free space, electromagnetic waves are modeled as propagating outwards from the source in all directions, resulting in a spherical wave front. Such a source is called an isotropic radiator and in the strictest sense does not exist. As the distance from the source increases, the spherical wave front coverages to the planar wave front over any finite area of interest, which is how the propagation is modeled. The direction of propagation at any given point on the wave front is given by the vector cross product of the electric field E and magnetic field H at the point. The polarization of a wave is defined as the orientation of the plane that contains the E field. P is equal to E vector H. This cross product is called the pointing vector. When the pointing vector is divided by the characteristic impedance of free space, the resulting vector gives both the direction of propagation and the power density. When considering line of sight LOS propagation, it may be necessary to consider the curvature of the Earth. The curvature of the Earth is a fundamental geometric limits on LOS propagation. In particular, if the distance between the transmitter and the receiver is large compared to the height of the antenna, then an LOS may not exist. The simplest model is to treat the Earth as a sphere with a radius equivalent to the equatorial radius of the Earth. Next is non-LOS propagation. There are several means of electromagnetic wave propagation beyond LOS propagation. 
The mechanism of non-LOS propagation vary considerably based on the operating frequency. At VHF and UHF frequencies, indirect propagation is often used. Example of indirect propagations are cell phones, pagers and some military communications. An LOS may or may not exist for these systems. In the absence of an LOS path, diffraction, refraction and or multipath reflections are the dominant propagation modes. Diffraction is a phenomenon of electromagnetic waves bending at the edge of the blockage, resulting in the shadow of the blockage being partially filled in, due to inhomogeneity in the medium. Multipath is the effect of reflections from the multi-objects in the field of view, which can result in many different copies of the wave arriving at the receiver. The over-the-horizon propagation effects are loosely categorized as sky waves, tropospheric waves and ground waves. Sky waves are based on ionospheric reflections or refractions and are discussed presently. The tropospheric waves are those electromagnetic waves that propagate through and remain in the lower atmosphere. Ground waves include surface waves which follow the Earth's contour and space waves which include direct LOS propagation as well as ground bounce back propagation. Hope you all understood. Meet you in the next topic. If you have any queries, please get in touch with us by typing your comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Do like and subscribe to our videos. So what are you waiting for? Join us for the course and do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Also, if you like our videos, don't forget to hit the like button and share our videos.